Lincoln Boulevard is one of the most notorious red light districts in Los Angeles. But tonight, the prostitutes in this area are LAPD vice officers working undercover in a major sting operation. Okay, so he wants to fuck for $10 and you want to fuck for $10. Okay, how about behind the alley? The dark in the, in the alley? Okay, yeah, let's go. The two men agree to pay for sex and officer Susan Pulley gives the prearranged signal. Her colleagues respond immediately and move in for the arrest. Put your hands on the back of your head. You. Okay, Raul, you're under arrest. 647B, so station of prostitution. It was Susan's first undercover assignment. I feel so cheap, $10. <laughs> you're responsible for that, huh? <laughs> two, for two for 20. Come on. Hey, two for 20. <laughs> At LAPD's Pacific Station, preparations are underway for tonight's vice operation. <laughs> Male officers Louis Alarcon and Pete Stone will be the backup. While female officers Kelly Clark and Heidi Yannis have the dangerous job posing as prostitutes. I don't buy clothes especially for working. I just take it out of my closet. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's something I haven't worn for a while. Like, yeah, this is good. Or maybe it's something I just wore the night before out dancing. Now when we go out somewhere and we're wearing the same outfit, we feel like everybody's staring at us thinking we're a prostitute when we would have never thought anything <laughs> you about don't. it. Street prostitutes in L.A. are especially vulnerable to violent attacks. My husband's a police officer. So is Kelly's. But he's, he's not really crazy about it. You know, he, he lets me do because I enjoy, I enjoy my job. He lets me do it, but he's not real crazy about it. Here we are. We got a lot of people showing up already. On a rooftop overlooking Lincoln Boulevard, the vice unit is setting up for the undercover operation. Heck of a drive They're hoping to make a large number of arrests tonight. OK. Let's try to put those on the other side. Those are. Uh, the LAPD targets street-level prostitution because of its links to other crimes. The majority of street prostitutes are crack cocaine addicts. We have everything from girls that look like the Hollywood type, all dressed up, and then we have girls that are like drug addicts and they have sores all over their body and they wear basically dirty rags. And you'd be surprised at the type of people they pick these girls up and they don't seem to mind. Tonight's operation involves over 50 LAPD officers. Their targets are known as Johns, men who solicit sex from women in exchange for either money or drugs. As leader of the operation, Kelly's job is to brief the others on the crucial evidence needed for the arrest. You're gonna, for the violation, you want the specific sex act, and you also need compensation, money, drugs, clothing, alcohol, whatever. Sometimes they'll offer you a, a pizza as they're driving to deliver their pizza. <laughs> Just accept it. Don't take it as a, their $2 as a personal slam. <laughs> Just say, OK. <laughs> I have some terminology um, written down here. Straight sex, if they say they want straight, straight sex, um, that usually means sexual intercourse, half and half, um, oral copulation and sexual intercourse. And I added the Lewinsky <laughs> job. Or a copulation. <laughs> you never know, you might hear that. Things you're going to be on the vehicle? Louis leads the male officers, posing as street people, but armed, and in constant radio contact to protect the women. And to stand your toes, pretend you're like, like a drunk or uh, waiting for the bus or walking by, but your eyes and the ears are that you see. It's just a little two inch. The only protection Kelly and the other women carry is a small handgun. I'm ready. Go get him. While Heidi and Kelly find the going slow, Officer Raina Frazier may be on the verge of her first arrest. 
a Santa Monica employee working his evening shift. I work for the bus lines. You're not a cop? I work for the bus lines. Leave it there. It looks like a cop car to me. Of course it looks. It's a city car. OK. No, what you looking no. for? No. You want your sex and blow job? No. I got to know what you want first. You sure you're not a cop, right? Yeah, baby, I do. What do you want? A blow. A blow job? That's it? You just want a blow job? Well, I don't do dinner. I'm working. I can't do it like you see. I might get a call. Okay. I have a radio here. Okay. Can't guarantee I'll be here. But Raina's client decides to leave, and Heidi's only getting offers for a date. With me? The arrest teams have been waiting for hours in a side alley. Just when they think nothing is going to happen, Reyna's city employee suddenly reappears. So you're serious? Let me see, you're not a cop, huh? Yeah. Okay, so you just want a blowjob, that's it? Okay, no kinky shit, right? What do you mean kinky shit? No kinky shit, just a blowjob. Like what? Kinky shit like what? I stay over there. 40 bucks, is that cool? That's a lot. 40 bucks. She must get, get him to name a price. I was thinking about 20. 20? For a blowjob, yeah. Nothing else? All right, let's go. As soon as the deal is done, three backup teams move in for the first big arrest of the night. Clear right there. scary because I didn't know what he wanted. I thought he was a Santa Monica police officer and he was swearing to me that he wasn't, so I had to play the game. He's in a city vehicle, probably on city time. Now this is, I doubt it's a take home vehicle, so it's probably a city vehicle on city time. He, he's, he's picking up a hooker. I think he got a call or something and he drove around and he came back. He parked in front of where he thought I told him I lived and he wanted, he wanted a quickie. And that was it. <laughs> the city employee was charged with soliciting, fined, and will almost certainly lose his job. Over the next four hours, the undercover team have a busy night and make over a dozen arrests. Okay, 40 bucks? Okay, I'll meet you in the alley. Kelly's had an evening full of strange requests. I like, I'm kinky. You're kinky? I'm kinky. I like to be sexually punished. Sexually punished? Yeah. Huh. Wow. I like to, to have my balls squeezed and slapped and my nipples pinched. And All right. But I also like tenderness and affection, too. Oh. I, I, I want to, you see, like I, a wide variety. I like to be, yeah, I do. I like to be played between huh. pain and pleasure. How'd you figure out those needs? Years, they, just, <laughs> they just grew. Huh. You know, and I've been, it's uh, been a long time accepting myself that this is my sexuality. All and right. The other thing is I don't have a lot of money. You don't? No. Well, what are we looking at? I don't know. what. Uh, I was hoping, except from San Francisco, I usually uh -huh. get uh, half an hour for 35 or $40. You know. right. Having named his price, Kelly gives the signal, and the backup okay. teams move in for the final arrest of the night. Interesting conversation. Probably our mo probably one of the most interesting ones I've had out here. <laughs> Got about 14 or 15 uh, bodies in custody, so that worked out good. Real smooth. No incidents. So we enjoyed it. Officers Shannon Reese and Charles Rodriguez are responding to a call for backup. We're sitting with a stolen car. They've got two suspects inside the car, and I believe it's a U-Haul, so there's possible other suspects in the rear portion of the U-Haul. 
Officer Gary Smedley is also responding. Uh, I think it was a help call or a backup. They're up that way. When they arrive, officers have already restrained two suspects. Put your hands behind your back. And Shannon is called to formally arrest the woman. What? Uh, I believe the car is stolen, ma'am. Stand right here. Whose U-Haul is it? My people. How are you? This guy Gary recognizes the woman as a local her. prostitute and drug user. Okay. You have any ID on you? She says she just hooked up with him about two hours ago after she smoked some rock cocaine, and they're camping out here in the U-Haul. Stole a U-Haul van to do their business in. If they go through it, I bet they'll find some dope. Dope van. On closer inspection, even Gary is surprised to find the vehicle being Why used as a mobile brothel and drug den. In here? He's probably got dope out. As soon as I see that, you know that. Oh, you know, she says they just smoked out like two hours ago. Yeah, they smoked Four hours out. Yeah, ago. It's, a, it's, a, it's a hoochie van. Yeah. There's another. And, uh -oh, life's Where? Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm going to step into that vehicle. Rolling brothel. Back at the vice unit, the undercover team is preparing for the second phase of the sting operation against illegal sex. Okay, well, the area we're going to be is uh, on Vistola Moor and Senpai. This time, the squad are targeting a notorious spot where gay men meet for sex in public. The team offer Pete some advice on posing as a homosexual. We're thinking, you know, if you walk a little sexier, you get him faster. Sorry, guys. You know, you just... I won't even work on that. I won't even try to. <laughs> Figure that one out. His face starts turning red. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, bend over in front of the end. Tie your shoe legs up. <laughs> I won't do that. Come on, Pete. There's some, I won't there's some do my that. lotion right there. Today's location is close to LA International Airport. Operating out of unmarked police cars, the team remained in constant radio contact. On a slip road near the airport, Pete hangs out, hoping to be propositioned by a man. To make an arrest, Pete must witness the men performing a sex act. This just takes time, you know. They're very, they're very patient. Uh, they don't mind spending all day here. And a lot of times they keep coming back for several days, but you know, eventually they'll uh, get hooked up and get some action, that's what they call it. Louis watches as one man shows some interest in Pete. Maybe as it gets dark. But he changes his mind. Shoot better. He has to walk a little more sexier, huh? I think. With uh, no trouble. While the vice unit waits, Gary Smedley is back on patrol. Oh, look at here. Who does he have? This one here. Officer Brent Honoré has stopped a prostitute Gary knows is not supposed to be in the area. It's supposed to be South Rose, is that right? Oh, is that right? Said, you know, my Vice. Vice said it. Oh, she's got that, uh, that um, stay away from Vice? Like many prostitutes, she's also a drug addict. Listen to this officer right there. Do you got any needles on you? No. I got a bloody pad. Now, actually, uh, Deborah looks good. And she is a crackhead to, you know, to the max. That lady likes smoking her dope. It's no big secret. Now, most of the girls like, um, this, they work out here on Lincoln. The guys will pick them up out here on Lincoln Boulevard and, and go to this here little ratty cat motel or in the car on these side streets and in the alleys. Shannon and Charles regularly ride bike patrol around Lincoln Boulevard. They're on the lookout for both drug dealing and prostitution. What? In the alleyways off the boulevard, they come face to face with the seediest sides of LA prostitution. What kind of neighborhood we work in here? This is our, this is our working environment. <laughs> if you look all up and down the alley, you'll just see junk all up and down the alley. But the reason this is here is because a lot of the prostitutes, a lot of the transients just come back here, they do their thing. 
they'll open up their beans or whatever it is and with their food and just leave their trash here. That's why this place looks like this. The airport sting operation has made two quick arrests for lewd conduct. Yeah, 12, four there. Yeah. I believe you were masturbating yourself. No, I was not. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I was not the officer that saw you, but... I was not, so that's not the truth. One suspect claims he was only there to watch the planes. I was coming down this way to go to the airport. Nah. Why do you follow him? You, you stop over here. Right, because the plane isn't due in until 8.07. So you know, you know what, what fly, what, which plane it comes yes, over here? What color is the plane? It's a I was not masturbating. Time. OK, so you had a little itch on the inside of your thigh in there? I, come on. You don't have to admit it, that's fine, but don't tell me that what I was looking at is, is completely wrong. I'm, I'm not, I was not masturbating. Both men will be charged with a criminal offense. The maximum penalty for lewd conduct is one year in prison or a $500 fine. Around Lincoln Boulevard, most prostitution involves drugs. Shannon and Charles check out a garage that's being used as both a crack and prostitution den. Oh, so somebody put that up, was in yeah. here last night. See right here, where they cook up their dope, heroin. This garage belongs to an old, probably in her 80s, 80-year-old woman. And she's afraid to come even into her back, into her back uh, yard here. She saw some people in here. That's the inside part of the syringe that pushes the stuff out. There's a crack pipe. Porno magazines. They got all kinds of prostitution deals going on in here. That evening, the vice unit is putting phase three of the undercover sting operation into action. This time, Pete will attempt to solicit sex from a woman on Lincoln Boulevard. And Heidi and Louie will once again be his street-level backup. You know, you, you pose as, as a John, that's what we call it. A John is a person that, that solicits uh, prostitutes for uh, a sex act. And, you know, an exchange of money, drugs, or whatever else. So uh, that's what Pete's going to be doing. Street prostitutes are often desperate for drugs, and this makes them extremely vulnerable. Uh, the other girl you were looking at, did she have like red tights on? Did she have tights, red tights? Okay. Uh, why don't you try the girl with the red tights? Okay, I'm gonna go off the air and give it a shot. Okay, uh, he's uh, pulling over the curve. Okay, as soon as the brake lights uh, go off, I'll, I'll start heading south down. Within seconds, the woman has offered Pete sex for money, yeah, yeah, he, he and Heidi and Louie have all the evidence they need to make an arrest. Yeah, he's way down there. The blinker means he's got a violation, so... Come on out. Police, come on out. Put your hands behind your back. What's your name? Louis pretends to arrest Pete to protect his cover. She first asked if I was a cop. I advised her I was, and you know, I kind of played the game. And then she said she's just out trying to make some money. And I said, that's great. I said, I, you know, I can help her out with that. You know, what are you looking for? And she says, $35. I said, I could probably do that, but I wanted to know what she was talking about. And she gave the rest of the violation, which was yeah. sex and oral copulation. What are you doing back here? Louis recognizes Lucy and examines her fingers for burns from crack smoking. How did you get started? The day my mother told me I was an incest child. You know, that's hard to admit. Don't you have any good thoughts about yourself, anything? I used to be a dancer. Really? Yeah. 
You didn't dance out here in California, though, right? No, I'm too old. That's what they say. Too old, and you don't have a tit job, and you don't have a face job. Yeah, that stuff is pretty demanding, huh? Louis has arrested Lucy several times before. I only know her as a uh, drug addict, but uh, the last couple of times, you know, she's uh, been uh, picked up by prostitution. And you can look at her rap sheet. She has a long, long history of uh, both, you know, drug abuse and uh, prostitution. She's a victim of a rape, and then uh, they happen in Santa Monica. And then apparently the same guy that raped her raped uh, several other women around the beach area. There's evidence of prostitution, but no drugs. Would you like green, pink, blue, or yellow? I'm a green type of guy. Yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 condoms. She's handled No. Really? Nothing. She's, She's a got heavy user. I mean, $10. You know, I checked this purse inside and out. No. How about nothing. No, I checked. They, they... I checked and really? I checked and nothing. Okay. Well, she's got it stuck up, or you know. Mm, she's not that type. But... It's not. It's definitely. She's got nothing here, and she, there's there's nothing down there, yeah, except okay. it's a little damp. I think I wash yeah. my hands. <laughs> they usually give you a lot more trouble, and usually require us to give more of the violation, but uh, I think she's pretty desperate and she, she gave it right up. So, I'll spend a few minutes here and get this report out and maybe go home on time. After a long day, Shannon is glad to be back home with her two sons in a neighborhood far from Lincoln Boulevard. I gotta clean my kitchen before I do anything. So it's just laundry to fold. Thank God my kids is already sleeping. I think they'll sleep at my mom's house, waiting for me. Poor guy. You want to go in your room? Yeah. You going to play your game? Yeah. You only play it for about 15 minutes, and it's bedtime. Mm -hmm. OK? My kids are fortunate enough that they live in a nice you know, area. They don't have to deal with you know, gangs and, and drugs and violence and all that. I mean, it's here, it's in the city I live in, but it's certainly not as prominent as it is um, in some areas that I've worked in. So it just makes you kind of count your, count your blessings every day <laughs> and realize how lucky you are. Lay down, Douglas, and go to sleep. No horsing around, I mean it. Right, boys, love you. Having been charged and released, Lucy returned to Lincoln Boulevard that night. <laughs>